I'll start recording. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Philosophy of Art and Science podcast. Today, we have two special guests with us. Before we get into that, I want to briefly make the plugs as normal. In the beginning, if you want to support these videos and this service further, go to patreon.com slash tawahado. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. I've also begun writing in addition to the audio. You can find the Tawahado Bible Study. Just search Tawahado Bible Study in Google, Apple, or Spotify, and you can find my writings at aksum.substack.com. That's A-K-S-U-M dot substack.com. Today we have with us our brother who's been a member of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church for quite a while, but has some roots in Trinidad. Our brother Amda Brahan, he's also uh, a writer or an author of iconography in the church, a skill that is much needed and that we need more and more people to be inspired from. I hope that people will be inspired by his work today in the old traditional means, but also taking advantage of technology. We also have with us today, also of Trinidad, our brother Haile Mikael, who's also been a long member of our church. And he's going to tell us about the most impressionable members of our society, and those are children, and a lovely story that he's uh, familiar with, a children's book. So how are your brothers doing today? Uh, <laughs> That's good. That's good. A little bit of everything. A little bit of yaina too. So, Brother Amde, why don't we start with you and then we'll go to Brother Haila Mikael. Uh, Brother Amde, can you tell us how you got into the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and how you begun to do? I see both of you have the, the background image there of some of the digital iconography. So tell us how you get started and, and transitioned from the more traditional iconography to the digital realm. Okay, Mesma Buel, Manfescadu, Sadu Amla Kamen, O Lord Jesus Christus, bless the works of our hands, uh, bless this uh, meeting that we have here today with our beloved deacon, uh, Henoch, and um, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my God, and my Savior. And with the intercession of our Lady Mariam, the Holy Virgin Dingel, O Ladit Amlak. Um, I got into the um, faith from my godfather. My godfather is actually Brother Haile Mikel Wole Amlak, who is on this um, chat here. Amazing. Um, yes, exactly. Um, we're all from the same area in our country of Trinidad and Tobago, which is a place called San Fernando. Uh, he was a member before the church. Um, we actually went to the same high school. I mean, um, was that Haile? High school, we'll call that? Prim prim primary, primary school. school. Primary school. <laughs> Um, his mother was a teacher. His father was a, was a principal also too of the school that we went to, San Fernando Boys RC. So more or less we grew up wow. sort of knowing each other at a distance, but had the same um, affiliation in terms of the things we like to do. So when the church came to the Caribbean and, and when we were, I, I came to the church around 1984, it was from a parish called St. Peter's Parish in San Fernando, which Brother Haile Mikkel was a member of. And I saw them coming out of a meeting and I asked him about, that time we had loved Emperor Haile Selassie, which we still love Emperor Haile Selassie, but that time we were really into it because that time was in the 80s. Uh, Rastafarianism was now on the rise in the whole of the Caribbean. So we were into back to Africa, Ethiopia, seeking Ethiopia, Ethiopianism and all that. And in speaking with him, he just said a few words to me, tell me, come and look at the church, come and see. And when I came to the church, um, I fell in love with it. And from there, I was baptized in 1984, um, February, I believe, 20. 25th or the 26th of February, if I could remember clearly, 1984. And from there, um, we, I never stopped um, being a member of the church. Mm -hmm. Before that, we always loved to pray because the Caribbean people are a praying people. Caribbean people um, love to pray, love, love Christianity. But this former Christianity, Ethiopian 
orthodox which God came and led us to it is what we really love and gravitated to it. When I was baptized, he became my godfather and in him being my godfather, I learned a lot from him. We also had in our midst um, two Ethiopian fathers, which was Archman Wright, Memahadis Gesesi, and Haile, you could jump in here in between, okay? And Abuna Tadias, who was originally before Abba Gabriel. They were young fathers who came, were sent out by the emperor to the Caribbean and um, Abba Tachin, which is Abuna Tadias, he resided in the island of Trinidad and Archman Wright, Memahadis Gesesi, um, he resided in the island of Tobago. Now, as a young, um, you, as a youth, I loved painting and drawing. I did that from when I was very small. But coming into the church and meeting Abu Natarias and Archman Wright is when it really kicked off for me. And it really kicked off soon after baptism. Um, I, the, the church didn't have no set of icons or anything of the sort. And um, I just came and offered my services that I maybe was around in my 20s, in my early 20s, just like you, <laughs> Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm on the eve of 30. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a two months away from being 30, but yeah. Oh, wow, <laughs> right. So I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, both of you, let the record show, God's son and Godfather both predate me in the church. I, my baptism was January 1991. So wow. you both predate me by about, you, you at least uh, six, seven years. And then yeah. Brother Halim Mikhail a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so, and by the way, another, another funny sign of Providence, where I grew up in Los Angeles, California, in the United States, I grew up in an area which is very famous, where most of the movies are shot in Hollywood. And the name of this area is called the San Fernando Valley. Oh, so that's a, wow. very funny, that's a very sign of providence. We didn't even talk about that before. Right, yes, yes. So interesting, very interesting. Glory to God. On that. Glory to God. Amen, amen. So, so Brother Haile Mikael, let, let us know how you were able to be Brother Amda uh, Burhan's godfather and how you entered as, as well. Oh, well, um, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Everything, you know, give God the glory, really, yeah? because as it was, then we were seeking Ethiopianism, yeah? And um, the, in the 1970s, there was a lot of um, uh, the, what you call the Black Power movement, yeah? Um, I remember as a young fella, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, you know? And um, coming out of that, I personally wasn't satisfied with just, you know, the say it loud, black and I'm proud. Because I always used to say, you know, if, if I am an African, I must have my language. I must have a language, you understand? So I was looking for that balance in, in, in my consciousness then. And um, eventually, same, same through the Rastafari movement, we ended up finding the church. You know, we went to the church. And from there, it's history because influence of the Ethiopian fathers, when they, ex they, they explanations to us then, uh, one time um, I recall Abuna Tadia saying to me, he said, Aile Mikael, you think you love the emperor more than me? You know? so, so all of that caused us to fall into place with the church. Yes, we love him, but we, we came to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the, our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. The church mm -hmm. gave us more than, than just uh, the history, the tradition, and the mysteries, you know. Um, as I said, I wanted the language, and I tried my best then to, to learn the language. Yeah? But as I said, it, it is difficult because language is communicational, so you have to be, you know. It's something that you have to be doing as much as possible, and we don't really have that system in place. Yeah, but um, basically, I came from a Christian background. You know, my mom was a devoted Christian. Then you know, we, we came from Roman Catholicism. You know, so I grew up then, very strong Christian. You know, but uh, we wanted more. We wanted it based on. We built it. To, we wanted it based on. To be honest, eh? we wanted it based on, 
on on having a better understanding from a from an African point of view then so that makes sense that and that's beautiful that's interesting that you said the Roman Catholic Church I thought in the Caribbean the Church of England or the Anglican would be bigger but uh, that, that I think you're one of the first people I've met who who came from the Roman Catholic tradition I had met a lot of other Anglicans even hearing you know for example you're talking about that time period one of the biggest figures of that time period people always like to bring up is of course Bob Marley and it's, it's interesting you all are mentioning your experience in Trinidad and Tobago and Rastafarianism from what under I, I understand and there's a lot that I do not understand but they're they're very diverse groups even within the Rastafarian <laughs> movement the, the groups I'm most familiar with are the 12 tribes as well as the Bobo Shanti but I know there are many groups I, I do not know of was it, could you tell us if was there any difference of the way it was expressed in Trinidad versus Jamaica? Because I think a lot of times people just focus on Jamaica and they might forget in the United States about Trinidad, or would you say it's pretty much the same, or were there any substantial differences? Well, with this vision, our vision was more or less from taking it from Marcus Garvey. We did, we did exactly what Marcus Garvey said, self-sufficiency, and education. So that, that, that make, uh, we would more or less um, looking at the other groupings and seeing the type of advancements that we're making in those uh, directions. We were interested in building school. We were interested in having our own businesses. Beautiful. So um, it, it just, it just we, we, we tried to build our own church. In the first up, we tried to build our own church on a piece of land. It wasn't our land, but we thought it was government land, but it wasn't government land. So we tried to build a place of worship. And then from there, we got up another place. We found another place where the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was functioning in San Fernando. And we started to function there. And from there, we, we got a piece of land in, 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 in um, Kukia Village, St. Peter's Parish. And the, the church was built there and we started to function in the church in, in um, Kukia. But um, we never, we never augured too much to the 12 tribes or the Bengi. We were wrong all of that because it was part of the, the movement at the time. But eventually we found ourselves at home and that was the, that is the Ethiopian Orthodox Swahili Church. Mm -hmm. at, the the time, at, the, at the time when um, I, it, um, when I, we saw Rastafarianism, we want to know affiliation or any any group as as highly said we loved it we love what was happening because as as bob said is a natural mystic blowing through the air in our heart we were seeking africa we were seeking black consciousness we were seeking all those those things that was the prevailing um that's how the, that's how the society was in the caribbean and for us we by God's grace, we came to the church at a, at a very early time of, of that influx of the influence of Rastafarianism. So a lot of uh, Tr Trinidad really, the members in Trinidad really came to the church at an early stage and a lot of brothers found and sisters found the church and baptized and eventually began to grow and learn from there what Ethiopia has come to taught, to teach us. That's the main um, point with why we love Ethiopia so much and Ethiopianism because the teachings of the church even though yes we read the scriptures but the explanations and the understanding that our fathers impart to us is different from how the other denomination that is Christian um, interpret the scriptures and interpret the Bible and on top of that now we come to realize that Ethiopia was from in the beginning you know, blessed by God. Ethiopia is the land of God. Ethiopians are what we term as sons of God. So we have coming out of shattered slavery. Our four parents were into slavery and all that. We are children born from that. And then seeking that consciousness of finding our roots then, it led us straight to Ethiopia. So for us then, we came with the conclusion that God called us to this faith. God called us directly to him, not by flesh and blood, but by the, we, we come to be Ethiopians by the spirit of God. And as a brother Ali Mikkel said, we love the language. So he started off um, an Amharic class. We learned Amharic at, at that very early stage. A lot of brothers and sisters used to come to the Amharic classes. I mean, the Fidel, I mean, we were taught by that was brother White Ali. 
Yeah, brother, brother, brother White was his name, an old gentleman who had loved Amharic. He was a member of the church also too. And from there, the, it's, it's what the Amharic is what really um, sort of distinguish us then because we learn when we baptize, we learn the Abatache Noi and the Virgin Mary and pray, all baptized members. And that still happens to today. We hardly say the Abatache the Father prayer in English in the church. We more say it in Amharic because it's a natural progression. And then we also learn the Fidel, the Ha, Hu, He, Ha, He, 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 the Abu Gida, Abu Gida, He, Wu. So we went straight into it. Then some of us went as far as learning to count. We learn also to, to, to read some of the, the Gies books that um, we had. And to kind of go back to the question of um, the, the, um, the icons and everything, it, I did an icon and Brother Hailey, Mikael took me to the Ashman right. And I thought that was a beautiful icon. You know, as a young man, you think your yeah, icon is nice. But the Ashman right told me, okay, I'm the touch up here, touch up there, touch here and when it was finished it was so beautiful and his name was um archman right Mema hadis gesesi he baptized gabriel selassie mm -hmm. but when when he was going through his monastic teachings he was so excellent in his learning that the abbot of the monastery at that point in time gave him a new name which is new touch that is how he get he got the name hadis gesesi yeah new yes. touch so yes. what we say then is that I received that new touch then based on that little time there he spent with me and I spent with him showing me, okay, I'm the icon here. And believe it, uh, Deacon Henock, from that day on, that was it. That was it for me as an as a, as a, as a artist in the church. The church needed wall murals. We found icons that we could have found from pictures. And, and um, I was doing airbrush painting at that time, painting t-shirts and dress shirts and everything. And then I apply the airbrush to the icons in the church in Aruka. And I know you saw some of those icons that I that I sent you. And those are up to today, as Brother Haile could tell you, those are fresh as if it's yes. still, it was Wonderful. done just recently. Yeah. And so you're saying that basically you learned from this one Archmandrite no, how no, to no, get no. the style? Oh, 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 yes, yes, that is it, that is it. He taught because him. The he taught him such. The backgrounds such. behind you is very identifiable. It's very identifiable in the Ethiopian style. You know, each, even within our communion, we have Syriac style, Coptic style, Armenian style, and Ethiopian style, or we can say the Giz right style to include our Eritrean brothers. It's the same style. And again, the, the Malankar, the Indians, they, they borrow from the Syriac style, although they'll have their own but it, it from, it's just from the Syriac style, and they're all perfectly orthodox. They're all, you know, valid in our church, but there's this unique, like you said earlier, African expression, and you, you are able to learn it just from, from that interaction with the one Archimandrite. That's so wonderful to hear. Yes, yes. So you began painting the wall murals, but what I really love is when Brother Haile Mikhail mentioned Marcus Garvey, I'm a big fan of Marcus Garvey as well. A lot more of his writings I need to read and learn. But for me, the, the sort of the black liberation in terms of economic self-sufficiency is very close to my heart. In the Los Angeles community that I live in, there are parts of Los Angeles where you see the Jewish community, you see the Chinese community, you see the Syrian community and the Armenian community, they own grocery stores, they have doctors, dentists, and it is the Marcus Garvey view of self-sufficiency. And we have a little bit, but predominantly what we have are a few grocery stores, and then we have a bunch of restaurants. We, we don't see much beyond there entrepreneurially in an organized communal fashion. But what's fascinating to me is anybody who enters entrepreneurship, Brother Amda, you, you also are an entrepreneur, am I, am I right? And how, how did you incorporate these ideas of self-sufficiency and entrepreneurship alongside, you know, building your artistic skills? Well, um, it's, it's the same thing also too, because we all read the books of Marcus Garvey, you know, and um, I was into Gav Marcus Garvey readings also too. We read a lot of speeches of Emperor Haile Selassie as far as education and all those things that he, the speeches that he gave. So um, I, at a young age, I worked in the system maybe for 
from 18 years to I tell about 21, 24 years old, somewhere around there. But when it's Gavi who really took me out of the system, reading his teachings, and with the artistic ability, I began to be self-sufficient. I painted murals, I painted apparel. I actually, um, when I spoke with Abatachin, he gave me the name for my business called Yetebebet, House of Wisdom. He blessed me with that Yetebebet, House of Wisdom. And we, I never stopped from there. I came in Trinidad. I was self-sufficient enough to maintain myself and my family back then. And I migrated to the United States. I um, have to, when it comes to the United States, you have to start working again, get yourself involved in, in, the, in the system again. I actually designed for Rockaway, that's Jay-Z. Yeah. Yeah, I was one of the um, senior designers for Rockaway, his company, for about seven years. And it's that where I learned to design apparel more so then. And then I started a brand called Color Heritage Apparel. So, and, and used to sell from 2007 to about 2015 anywhere. Yeah, I still have the brand, but it's more of Ethiopian and cultural icons that I, I, I do and images that I use on the brand. It's more Ethiopian driven because that's what, 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 what we love. And it has that reggae feel, that Rastafarian feel and that Afrocentricity feel. But the main theme, in the color heritage apparel is more of the Ethiopian flavor. So we have our own business called Color Heritage Apparel. It was blessed by Abuna Tadias. Um, he blessed us with the name of the overhead umbrella of the business, Yetebebe, House of Wisdom. So I do the icons and I do the clothing. And then Haile is with the books and, and those things and teachings, and that's what he does also too. Amazing. You're covering all aspects of aesthetic world or the art world. And I grew up actually wearing Rockaware, so I probably wore something <laughs> that you designed without knowing it. So that's amazing. And so, Brother Halamikal, can you tell us about your world in, in books? Tell us about the books you've been involved with and specifically this, this children's book that we mentioned on the front end. Well, before I say, um, Archman, right again, you know, well, you know, um, Mama, master teacher, you always used to say, um, if you're holding the book and you bend it, you will say, no, 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 no. Don't bend my books. Don't bend. <laughs> Don't bend my books. Don't bend my books. He say, he say, he say, my books. This is what he taught me. He say, my books are my friends. I pick them up when I want and I put them down when I want. And they never quarrel with me. Do you, do you think that you could get a friend like that? And that was, that was for me, that wisdom was for me, that channeled me now into reading more. Although I was, as I said, I came from a, a more or less educational background, my parents and so on. But I, I delved a lot into reading now about Marcus Garvey and Ethiopianism, you know, and some of the books then that are empty. But this particular book then that Amde is interested in us sharing with you all, is a book then that was written by um, Kesakarias. He's from Barbados, another island chain of islands, and he's from Barbados. And um, the name of the book is Save the Children. So I, I, um, I took pieces out of it to highlight what it is that we went through, how we went through it. I took some pieces now, how we are supposed to get out of it, yeah? and um, where we have to go in the future. So it was a past, present, and futuristic then. This book then, the pieces that I choose out of it. But this book is, um, was produced by Kezakarias. But I study it. I study all my books. And I, but I, I, right now, I'm trying to push then this Save the Children Day. Because you see, the, you see the situation in the world today, and then our children need saving then. Because we don't want them to we don't want them to come down the mountain top at all. We open them to, for them to stay up on the mountain top. So we have to influence that because there, there's a lot of influences and um I am not so technical, you know. I always say I'm dinosaur, but I know the information then that I could give them that I could impart to them. If I have somebody like I'm there with me working with the, the literature, we could impart that information to our younger generation. But we truly and truly, we do want them to come down that mountain top and mingle with each other. When he says mountain top, uh, 
the Kanehe Naoki means Ethiopia. That's how we, we refer to Ethiopia as that, that place there, way on top that is preserved, was untouched, was, un, was never colonialized, and has the teachings that the world needs today. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church is the, is the lighthouse for the African people and for also to the freedom loving peoples of the world who really wants to know the, the, the truth. Ethiopia, the source of the Giza teachings that needs to be translated and disseminated down to the succeeding generations is very, very important. And we, you know, being blessed to have the uh, Abu Natalias and the late Ashman Wright, Memadis Gassesi, being around them, they in, inculcate this deep love for, for, for Ethiopia and Ethiopianism. So, you know, we go into the, the Tewahedo teachings of the church, that which makes Ethiopia unique among all the Christian um, um, churches and Christendom. And that's what we want to really highlight more and bring, you know, to, to, to our people. So the Save the Children book, as Haile was talking, have certain, it's, it's, it's kind of encompasses that. Haile, maybe you could talk a little bit on what you were just saying there. Um, for us then, uh, remember what we knew is that Ethiopia was never colonialized. That is what the basis of our understanding, Ethiopia was never colonialized. So if she wasn't colonialized, she, she remained with her original teachings. I always say that. So her, it, it, uh, her teachings uh, was not tarnished then by Europeanization then. Yeah? So that is what made us cling to Ethiopianism. Ethiopia became a symbol uh, as I, I have it here, Ethiopia became a symbol of African independence then. So the whole focus really was on, on Ethiopianism. Yeah? Ethiopianism became to us the, the, the biblical, the ancient, the ancient Ethiopia hands in, in Blydem are stretched out in service to God and humanity. For Africa is distinguished as having served and suffered. Yeah? In reference is that if the principle laid down by Christ is by which things are decided above, that we would be chief and become the servant. He who would be chief must become the servant of all. Then we see the position which Ethiopia and the Ethiopians must ultimately occupy. This is how we see it. That's so wonderful. These are behind two of the things you mentioned are two of the biggest missions in my own life and service. I've been a deacon now for about five years, but I've been serving in English for about eight years. And through the liturgy, through teaching the Bible, according to the interpretation of the School of Aksum or the School of Ethiopia, through translations of the evening prayers and many other prayers, and down the line, if you pray for me, maybe one day, all four books of Kudus Yared and some of the books of Kudus Georgis Zagasicha or Zesagala as well, I have many plans for that. And so it's, it's two pronged. The one prong is for the adults, the adult education in a world with a lot of spiritual competition to be able to, like you said, take seriously the command that if we want to be the greatest as Ethiopians, we cannot be greedy with what God has given us. Instead, we have to translate it for the various African peoples of the diaspora. So we have to spend our lives serving them. So I feel that. At the same time, you say this book is called Save the Children, and a big part of my, my service over these past five to eight years has been serving you know, my local Sunday school and other Sunday schools because the youth are so impressionable. And even in my, in my secular work, I've been a teacher on two different years in some historically downtrodden areas of, of Los Angeles. And it's my big dream you know, to be able to have you know, the church to have her own elementary school at the same time to be feeding people like a theological college or a seminary, but not necessarily for people who are seminarians or theological students, for everyday brothers who are seeking the truth, just like you all. And to, to make sure that, you know, there is food for the young and food for, for the old. And there's plenty of, of like you said, resources to draw upon from, from the mountaintop. And I like the way that you say mountaintop because uh, I'll tell you, the American mythology and mythos of the Puritans was that they were this city on a hill and they're drawing on the language from the Sermon on the Mount, from the Christian imagery. 
and yet at the same time they had the the two horrible and well-known evils of indigenous genocide and African slavery. Now, I don't want to pretend to you that there was no slavery. There was slavery and there was conquest and there was blood in Ethiopia as well, but it was not the same thing. And ultimately, as you said, there was this preservation of this unique, not white man's religion, but African expression of Christianity that was linked to its roots in the Near East, in the Levant, in the, in the Middle East with the Coptic and the Syriac, especially the connections with Syria and, and Egypt. So I'm, I'm so glad to hear you saying that because those are the two big missions that I've had in, in, in my life as well. T tell us a little bit more about Save the Children. This, this is like a good sneak peek for those. I tell people a lot of times, a lot of folks, they're allergic to reading, so we have to read for them. I don't want to take uh, the spotlight from... Um, no, the, no, no, no. Go ahead, Ali. Go ahead, Ali. This is, this is, there's no spotlight. Please continue in the spirit of God. All right. Um, remember we, the, the level of colonialization that we experience. Um, if we were to talk raw, you, you took Africans from Africa, brought them to the Caribbean to work on their plantations as slaves but they did not bring slaves from Africa. They taught us then that they brought slaves from Africa, but that is not true. They brought African people from Africa to work on their plantations as slaves. So within that, um, the, the psychology, the misinformation, this particular book is based on a guy called Willie Lynch. You heard about the Willie Lynch, Willie Lynch technique? I've heard of him, but I'm not familiar. Right. This book is based on Willie Lynch, how he set out then to, to enslave our four parents, that it will last not just for a hundred years, but even a thousand years then, so that from generation to generation, that brainwash system, you know, will continue. So what they do, they, they pit us against each other. So Barbados, we fight against Trinidad, Jamaica fight against Grenada, and so on and so on. So that was one division. And then the other division then was tall and, the, and fair skin. And you know, all these elements they use then to divide our people. Because if we are divided, then we are, we are easily manipulated then uh, to do what they wanted us to do. So the first part of the book, Save the Children, gives us an example of, uh, this, this is the, the cover of the book. You seen it, Deacon Anna? Yeah, it's a little bit blending with the background. Put a little forward more. Put, put, just put it forward more. Right, yes. Yes. No, no, no. Let's keep it straight, Eileen. Right, right here, right here. All right. Yeah, we saw it's called sorry, Let's Save the Children. For those yes. at home, it's called Let's Save the Children. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so um, he, he lay out his design of how to go about uh, keeping us in mental slavery then. That's what Bob talked about. And um, there are things that we, we of ourselves would not recognize. We would not see these things just so on our own then. So we try, we try to help highlight these things then, to point it out to our brothers and sisters then, where they are using these different forms of techniques to put us against each other. So even if it is so deep rooted then that um, even at a Christian level, the, the majority of Christians in the Caribbean are of African descent, you know, African people, you know, but they are more, they're more ogre than towards them, the European type churches. And that is what is, you know, one of my tasks then, you know, and, and to try to get them to understand their history and the tradition. And if they understand the history and the tradition, the mysteries will follow, yes. Thank you, Brother Hala Bikail. Brother Amda, one of the things I want to ask you that I, I see Brother Hala Bikail touched upon is this way in which there's a divide and conquer strategy within the various islands of, of the Caribbean. I've sadly never been to Trinidad and Tobago, but I've been to a few myself, to Bahamas and St. Martin and, and a few others. Uh, 
uh, was it Turk and Caicos? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I've been to a few myself. So Trinidad is going to be on the list one day. But brother, I'm the, oh. you had the experience of being in Trinidad and in the United States. Can you talk how, if at all, the colorism, the racism, the divide and conquer strategy that he's talking about and it traces back to Willie Lynch, this kind of intergenerational divide and conquer, do you see it playing out in, in different ways or the same ways in terms of the United States and Trinidad? Uh, it's, the same, it's the same way in the United States. Even as, a, as in the fashion industry, you would see that um, a lot where the models or the, the, the people who they choose is more of a certain skin color, lightest, that kind of play again that, that they did. So it's, it's, it's embedded and as we just say, if you're woke, or you you're, 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 know I mean, you're enlightened and have a certain mindset, especially that Ethiopian Orthodox mindset from, from, from there, you'll be able to see all the trappings that the society has laid for us. And we are able to, to make it out at a glance. You know, Ashen Wright always said that in one of his books he wrote, you know, some may take a binoculars to see something, yes. but then the spiritually minded person could see it at a glance, yeah, you know? Right. So, you know, based, because of our upbringing, because I enjoy the best of both worlds, the Caribbean sensibilities and understanding, you know, where I come from and then coming out into America and, and understanding the American approach as an African-American black conscious person. But at the same time, my mindset is Ethiopianism. So I sit at a position where, you know, I could look at, both things and see, okay, what's happening here, what's happening there, um, you know, have the mindset to be able to discern um, if what we are seeing in America today, if it's true, if it's false, you know, it, things trigger in your mind to really take a deeper look into it. So yes, the Caribbean and uh, American landscape in terms of the Willie Lynch is the same because they had to maintain it across the board in order to maintain the, the racism then. Racism is not about black and white not really liking each other. And why I say that to say is because we, our mothers, grew up their children. You understand what I'm saying? Our mothers work then, the Caribbean women who come from the Caribbean and come to America, they work for the, the other race of people and, and mind their children. So in understanding racism, and this came from Dr. Claude Anderson, he says racism is a competitive relationship between groups of people vying for the control of wealth, power, and resources. And that once we understand racism from that perspective, then we could see everything else that happens are wrong because it's the control of wealth, power, and resources. So Ethiopia, the Africa was colonialized and, and conquered by the European powers. And the last prize was Ethiopia herself. They tried, but because we know, and we have read in the books and came to that understanding also too, that because Ethiopia is the land of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the Virgin Mariam there protects Ethiopia, St. George, we know Ethiopia shall never be conquered. But she has, and that's, that's the reason why the church today now has a very important part to play in the free now. In this particular time where you have the black conscious, um, black consciousness is, is an awakening now within the whole world, right? Regardless of what form it takes, it, it, it takes a certain form and people are beginning to get conscious. Everyone wants to go back to Africa. Everyone wants to do... I mean, something African conscious, black conscious, it's, it's a, there's an awakening. But the church in itself is, stands at the top of all that to bring to the people the salvation that is needed. You know, um, I, can, I, can, I have my own self-sufficiency and all that, but I gain it through having my spiritual freedom also too. So we came from physical shattered slavery to economic slavery, because as Majesty said that, the basis of racial discrimination is economics. 
and it is only with these weapons can we eradicate such evils. That was one of his speeches that he, he said. So we understood the importance of working and trying to have your own and building your own. And then now, spiritually now, we have been freed, we come and we come to Ethiopian Orthodoxy, Ethiopianism, then the Tewahedo faith, which then, so for us now, we, we know that this is something that we have to bring now to those who love Christianity, to those who love Christ, and also to of our own people, and also to the freedom-loving peoples of the world who wants to come now and really, as they say, gather under your vine and under your own fig tree. Um, and there's a point there that you said that I want people to really understand. And earlier you, you called it the system, and I really like that. And you talked about how you were in the system for a little bit, you exited, but as you immigrated, you had to get into the system again so that you didn't have any sort of dogmatic positions. You said, I'm going to use it and take advantage, but I'm keeping my, my goal at the same time. I want you to explain a little bit more for the folks at home. What does it mean to be the system? And because I see it increasingly, people do not want you to have your own space. They want to occupy every space and they want their agenda present in every space. I see it in the schools, which is the field that I work in, whether it's the elementary school or academia at the higher university level. But I think it's, it's all over in many different fields. And you know, you're, you're talking about the fashion industry, which is your field. Brother Hala Mikhail is talking about publishing, right? So tell us the important, like tell us what the system is and why, why is it important for you to maintain that physical and spiritual freedom outside of the system in your own space? All right, let me see if I could answer it in this way. Um, the the, the Japanese people, right, or the other nations of the world have their culture, right? They have their culture, they have their own teachings, they have their own ways. But when they come to the West, in the Western world, they, they still maintain the culture, they still maintain their tradition, but adapt that which is good from the system and apply it to, to there. That's why that country, even though they went through that war and with Hiroshima was able to raise itself off the ground again because they came out into the West, maintained their culture, maintained their traditions, but they adapted whatever they need to develop themselves. And this is what um, the Ethiopian youth have to do. He already has that treasure house. He comes from a place where he is solid, he knows himself, he has his own traditions, he has his own language, not many countries have their own language. He has their own alphabet. Not many countries have their own alphabet per se. He has his own way of worshiping God. Not many places have their own way of worshiping God. Now he needs, how do I advance myself in, in, in this new world in the 21st century then? So all he needs to come out now is to take the good out of the system and apply to himself, but maintain his dignity as a human being. Like Brother Haile Mikkel, okay, his name was Roger Hellenese, but he changed his name completely to Haile Mikkel Wole Amlak. You know, and for him now, he identifies himself as that person. All we missing now is just our language, you know, to fully be able to speak Amharic because we eat the injera, we dress that. When we go to church, we don't go to church in suit and tie. We go to church with, um, with our shama and our Ethiopian dress all the time. That's just how, you know, we, we, we adopted it. And, and to show the difference in, in who we are among the people then. So the, the, to maintain it is to maintain a cultural identity. And all we need to add to it now is just a technological advancement. As much as we would need, we take what is good from it and we apply it to ourselves because Ethiopia right now and Africa right now is growing, although it considers a third world country, has, has, is um, exploding at a time when technology is at its height. 
to Africa now, next 50 years, the next 100 years, then will be the new bread, will be the new place where everybody will want to go. And Ethiopia in her development now as a country that is developing at, at, a, at a fast rate, will be sitting at the top of that food chain once she positions herself, because she has that which everybody else needs, which is the truth. Ethiopia has the truth to teach the people to the world. So because of that truth, I was able now to say, okay, I was blessed by God to work for Jay-Z and Damon Dash for, for that a length of time, made relationships there, but at the same time, I was orthodox within, within my framework as they, and, and I never did hide it. You know, they, they, they know me as that, this is, this is, this is, I mean, I'm there, Winston Jack or Pops or whatever they call me. So, but I kept my, my, my cultural identity. And this is what, you know, the Ethiopian youth, he is not to, to leave his culture and take up westernization, no. You already have Gena, you already have Timket, you already have Tinsaye, you already have um, Mascal, you already have, help me, help me, Astemero, come help, help me, Deacon. You already have all, all, all <laughs> the culture. culture. You have it. Yeah, you have the well, culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is what you have. To, that is what you have. Because let me take a little reading, um, Deacon. Please. You know? Please. Yeah, because this is the things then that if, 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 if we don't want them to get themselves caught up in, because when you're getting when you get caught up in westernization you lose family life and if you, ha you don't have family life you can't have nationhood so here this here this little piece of reading it is necessary to remind them that it is a psychological fact that men learn to be fathers and husbands from their fathers and their fathers before them. Plantation slavery destroyed and denied this human process of learning how to be fathers and husbands. So basically, the African Caribbean family now seem ruthless and dysfunctional. It is not because that is the way they were created, but rather because of something that was done to them and its correction must involve us all. It is not natural to pe for people to behave so irresponsible in family and health matters. However, they will continue to behave irresponsible until some le legal le legacy of plantation slavery are addressed. So the, 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 the slavery not only has brought about uh, has not only brought about division, but it also brings about health issues because young women and young men, uh, if you don't know family life, if you, if you don't maintain your culture and so on, uh, at a very early time in your life, well, you know what will happen. Deacon, you know, Deacon, you, know, you know what will happen. They will just go astray because the influences of the cinemas, the influences of all the westernization will, will, will take effect then more than, than their, 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 their culture then. So we have to try and give them, give them their culture then as real and pure as we can get that to them. And this is why we choose then Orthodox Christianity, Ethiopianism then to try to give back to our people then because it's the purest that we have. Oh, Amen. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a union. It's a beautiful union where I'm hearing from both of you brothers, from Brother Amdebarhan, we are learning to bring the old tradition and advance it with the technology. Like we see the digital iconography behind you using computers to create the ancient wisdom that we received from Ethiopia, this ancient iconography. At the same time, realizing that with the technology advancing, we have Akon building huge cities in Africa. We have Idris Sandu, who was himself the, the CTO, the chief technological officer of uh, God rest his soul, our Eritrean brother, Nipsey Hussle, who his real name was Ermias Dawit Asgadom. I got to serve at his funerary rite here in Los Angeles. And his, his CTO was Idris Sandu, a Ghanaian American. And he has plans to, to make Ghana the next big hub. Jack, 
the founder, not the last name Jack of Brother Winston, but Jack, the founder of Twitter, the founder of the Square Company, the founder of the Cash App. He was in Ethiopia this past year, meeting with various entrepreneurs and data scientists. His plan for 2020, God did not have it, he brought this plague, but his plan for 2020 was actually to live in Africa the whole year, and his number one choice was Ethiopia. Now, I don't know what he's going to do after the pandemic, if he's going to do that, if he still has a plan. But he had said his plan was to live potentially in Ethiopia, but for sure in Africa for a year. But as you said, over the next 50, 100 years, it could be a new technological hub. You know, I, I plan whenever it's in my power to move back. And I was born here in the West too, but I, I plan to, to repatriate, as we learned from Marcus Garvey, when I have the capabilities, when I'm, I'm ready to, to be self-sufficient in that way and help the country. And as uh, Brother Hala Mikhail is mentioning, a lot of people, you know, I'm in the heart, I'm in Hollywood here. A lot of people, they let the cinema and they let the various ideologies influence them and they look down on family life. They'll try to make all women, and there's nothing wrong with any woman who wants to be self-sufficient and be a businesswoman, but they want to impose upon all women that they're not a real woman unless they're climbing the corporate ladder and never get married until they're 40 and not have children. And so the balanced traditional life, maybe where we have more mothers, maybe with side hustles, their own businesses working from home as they, as they raise children, and fathers taking more responsibility, we could begin to have those, those family values. And with postmodernism, secular humanism, the atheism, the cinema, as we mentioned, all these various influences, if we instead of trying to trap God on one day of the week, allow the Ethiopian Orthodox lens to be the lens that we see Uhud, Senyo, Magista Senyo, the whole week, yeah. Sunday through Saturday. If that is the lens through which we see everything, I think we begin to have some of the emancipation that, that you all are saying. Two things, Marcus Gavi, that was one of the things he mentioned. You know, he said that he said it, and, and a lot of the brothers, uh, our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, didn't listen to him carefully, but he said, he will see, um, I, like, I don't like, I, I, his grace always say, Aile Mikel Kota, because you don't want people to think then that, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry, you bring the facts. Yes, so he, he says, he, he said, I'll just read it, the last two lines. Um, he said, we Africans believe in the God of Ethiopia, the everlasting God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the one God of all ages. That is the God in whom we believe, but we shall worship him through the spectacles of Ethiopia. That's, that was a quote from Marcus Gavi. I love the other that. thing is, our generation is becoming so busy trying to prove that women can do what men can do, that women are losing their uniqueness. Women were not created to do everything a man can do. Women were created to do everything a man cannot do. So, so these influences is what we have to get into our systems now because it's, 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 it's a battle of good over evil. If we leave it um, and, and don't do anything about it, is the problem is good people stand back, you know, and these things will continue then. I don't want to quote too much, you know, because, you know, uh, His Majesty say it, you know, in that same way, you know what I mean? No, it's, it's great. We, we love the quotes. Brother Amda, and then if you have anything more, Brother Haile Mikhail, I think we should close up. But as we close up, give us any, any parting advice, maybe for the children in the diaspora, whether they be um, more recently Ethiopian or less, less recently, because we know with discoveries like Lucy, everybody is an Ethiopian. And we've heard that in the tracks too. It's a different brother saying, I am an Ethiopian. So we don't say Ethiopian and non-Ethiopian, but Ethiopians of more recent times and Ethiopians maybe from a little longer ago. Any parting advice? And then make sure to plug your businesses too. We want to make sure part of the economic self-sufficiency is that we're collaborating with one another and we plug your businesses as well. All right. This, this, uh, is, for, this is for the... Okay, go ahead. Great, great idea. Amde? Go ahead. This is, for, this is for the people in the Caribbean and Latin America. 
it is a disgrace that children are coming out of schools not knowing that all of what we know as Africa was once part of the region and the ancient new as Ethiopia, the land of the dark-skinned people. And this land of Ethiopia includes the Arabian Peninsula and all the biblical lands. Africa as a continent only come into being as a result of name change in the last late 16th centuries, about 500 years ago. It follows that there is no mention of Africa within the Holy Scriptures or within the pages of ancient history. Thank you. I could read more, you know, but I know um, time, time is limited. Yeah, so I'll let Amdi say go. Well, my, my, well, close, my closing remarks is for our people who is listening and those who want to understand more about Ethiopian Orthodoxy, um, first read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 26 to the end, where it speaks about God calling Philip to baptize the Ethiopian eunuch who had traveled from Jerusalem, traveled from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship on their yearly pilgrimage. This is part of the backbone of how Ethiopia came to accept Christianity. And we know then that the scriptures did not mention more about the Ethiopian eunuch after, but in, we know in the Gedla, I believe, is the book that has some information concerning more of his history. We can get more of the Ethiopian eunuch history. So Ethiopia is for us people, as I say, for us black people who seeks Christianity and who love, wants to worship God. As Marcus Garvey said, let's worship God through the eyes of and spectacles of Ethiopia. Um, for a business plug, my business is colorheritageapparel.com, where you can get culturally designed clothing and apparel and also nice Ethiopian icons. Again, colorheritageapparel.com, uh, Color Heritage USA for Instagram and Facebook. It's my name, Winston Jack, or Color Heritage TNT. Uh, so that's it, colorheritage.com. Thank you, Deacon Henock. Uh, you can Thank you very so much. And I want to leave us with a quote from the Bible as well. I love you called everyone to read Acts chapter 8. This I'm going to read could be found in the Gospel of Luke, but I think that the, the Gospel of Matthew just says it in such a beautiful way as it says so many things. So this is the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12. So a lot of you people have heard our brothers talk about the Ethiopian interpretation. This is one of those verses that a lot of people skip over, but they would do well to pay attention to. This is Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, and this is verse 42. And I'm reading from the Greek Orthodox Bible, New Testament. The queen of the south will stand up in the judgment with this generation, and she will condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, someone greater than Solomon is here. Amen. God, you really want us to stop right there? You really yes. want us to stop, boy? My Amen. goodness, wonderful, Let's wonderful. Let's then. Yes, I hope it hoping then that uh, we could have another session again because we. It, it, this was just I know bantering, uh, trying to get to know each other. But when the spirit flow in, then you will, we will be able to help each other in our development, in whatever fields you're in, we will just um, iron sharpen it and we'll be able to learn from each other more and more because it, it's how much books you have. I know it's 366 books you have. You know. When it went up to the heavens, I know it. He's talking about <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> in, that, in that case, Brother Haile Mikhail, I'll give you one more. Just because you said it in English, I'll give it to you in Giz. Hasin Yisrael Lahasin. Hasin Yisrael Lahasin. Iron sharpens iron. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deacon, close us, close us off in prayer, please. Close us off in prayer. Yes, she. Basama Ab, we will do a manifest caduce, a hadu amlak, Bakad Bissalasi, and the Amen were at my son, Nekahidaka Satan, Bakad Mazati, and Mirkad Disbeta Christian, and the Eti Samea Marams, Eo Lala Male. Lord, thank you for this time that you have given us with us to get to know the roots of Christianity, the roots of the African expression of Christianity. Allow us to be proud of the heritage that we have and allow us to share it with all the various brothers and sisters 
allow us to use the system when we need to, but also show us a path to create our own space so we can express Ethiopian orthodoxy in every field through our artwork, through our books, through our schools and education, through our healthcare, through our grocery stores, in every shape, way, and form, and on every day, allow us to show you the living God, the most high God in all times and in all places so we can grant you glory. And as you taught us how to pray, we'll pray to you saying, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers.